I match with this guy on Tinder. We speak once and he messages me to go out on a date with him that same evening. He's cute, so I say yes. Let's call him Paul. So I go home, I get ready and I meet him. He's actually really, really cute, even better looking in person. We get to Rev's and surprise, surprise, it is dead. And I was like, I did tell you. And then he was like, why don't we just go somewhere else? So I was like, okay, fine. So we end up going to a slug and lettuce. We're having small talk, he buys drinks, then I buy a round of drinks. It was just meh, like I wasn't laughing, but he was a nice guy and he was cute. So I was just enjoying myself, I guess. One thing that's important is I did ask him what time his train back was because he doesn't drive. So I was like, have you got a return ticket? And he was like, oh, don't worry, I've got the ticket. Like everything's under control. So I was like, okay, perfect, fine, amazing. So at 11 p.m., everyone's clearing up and they're basically telling us, to get out. It's a Monday night, no one is staying past 11. So I'm like, okay, I take this as my sign. In my head, I'm thinking this was a lovely day, but I'm ready to go home. So we go outside. I was like, I think I'm, I'm just gonna go home and go to bed. Sorry, I've got to wake up early tomorrow for uni. He was so understanding. He was like, yeah, no, fair enough. Can I walk you home? And if anybody knows South End, you know it is terrifying. It's scary. So I thought, wow, thank you so much. What a gentleman. So we get there. It's the awkward goodbye. He goes in to kiss me and I do that really awkward thing that's like, I tilt my head to go in for a hug because I really did not want to kiss him. Anyway, he then pulls away. Tell me why this man tries again as if my mind was just gonna suddenly change. Well, it didn't. I hugged him twice. At this point, I'm trying not to laugh. I say goodbye. He walks off. I get into my house. I burst out laughing. Anyway, I get ready for bed, take my makeup off and get into bed. When all of a sudden, I get a message from Paul. He says, we have a problem. And I'm thinking, what is going on? He proceeds to tell me that he's missed his train. Bear in mind, it's 11 p.m. And his phone is on 1%. So he's asking if he can come back to my house to charge his phone so that he can make his way back home. Now, I'm still thinking this guy is a nice, genuine man. We had a good conversation. And I thought, okay, if I was in his situation and I needed to get back home and I had no charge on my phone, I would pray someone would let me in the house to charge my phone. So me being the naive girl I was, I said, okay. Anyway, he gets to my house. Obviously, I'm in my pajamas, no makeup. We go to my room. <sighs> Paul walks into my room, grabs my guitar, sits on my bed, starts playing and singing at the same time. And I'm just stood there like, if that was me in that situation, first thing I would have done is said, I'm just here to charge my phone. I don't want to be in your personal space. That would have been my thought process. Clearly, Paul was not on that same wavelength. It's almost like he forgot he needed to charge his phone. First red flag. Whoa, that was the first red flag I spotted. I'm like, did you not need to charge your phone? He's like, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course. I was like, okay, pass me your phone. Let me charge it. And he was like, oh, no, no. Like, you give me the charger. Second red flag. Why can you not just pass you, me your phone so I can plug it in? But I thought, okay, whatever. Gave him the charger. Not even five minutes after. I turned around and I was like, what percentage are you on? Because I, I do really need to charge my phone as well. And I was just doing that to kind of see like how long it would take for him to leave. This man goes, oh, yeah, yeah. Don't you worry. You can charge your phone. My phone's on like 50%. The math ain't math ain't. In five minutes, it's gone from 1% to 50%. And I was like, I thought you said you were on 1%. And he was like, yeah, it was. It was on 1%, but I've got this phone that charges super quick. Babe, you've got an iPhone 12. I really don't think that's how it works. Do you think I'm dumb? Well, I clearly am dumb. So at this point, I'm not even gonna argue with him. I'm like, you can now leave. He's like, there aren't any more trains. And in Spain, where I'm from, we don't have trains. So I didn't know how they ran. I didn't know if there was like a last train. I didn't know how they work. Any sane person would have known that he's lying in that situation. But I, I just believed it. Idiot. I know, so silly of me, but I believed he had missed his train and there weren't any more. So I'm like, okay, well, like, can your friends pick you up? He was like, they're all out drinking, I've asked, they can't pick me up. Okay, this guy was not giving me solutions. At this point, I'm really, really exhausted, really tired. So Paul looks at me and says, do you mind if I just stay here? I'm like, well, what other choice have we got? I was like, I need to wake up at 5.30 a.m. for uni. He's like, that's fine, that's actually fine. And I was like, and we're just gonna sleep. Obviously, I am not going to sleep with a stranger in my bed. I also have a bit of trauma in these kinds of situations i didn't want to annoy him i didn't want to make him mad because i was scared he was gonna lash out i was scared that i don't know at the end of the day i actually don't know this guy he could have been a serial killer i was like let's keep him on the good side okay and i thought how bad can it be it's just a couple hours and then he'll be gone now i'm obviously i do not feel safe so i stay up this guy starts stripping and ends up in just his box and at this point i'm just like yes paul honestly do whatever you want just get into bed close your eyes and sleep you're on your side i'm on my side and that's how it's gonna be the whole night he suddenly starts to like pull me and like roll me over i'm thinking no please this man's trying to kiss me i'm like trying to move away he's trying to get on top of me i'm trying to roll over at one point i'm like stop 
just go to bed and I really do just want to sleep. And he was like, oh, oh, you should have just said like, yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Like, you could tell. It's very, very obvious. I am uncomfortable. Paul finally surrenders after trying quite a few times. Falls asleep. Me, on the other hand, I obviously do not sleep the whole night. 5.30 rolls around, the alarm goes off, and I've never gotten out of bed so fast in my life. Switching on the lights, opening the blinds, I'm like, it's your time to go. He's getting his stuff, and I'm literally shoving him out. Literally, he's about to go in to kiss me again. Shove him out. I'm like, no. And he's like, okay, okay, bye. So he leaves. I'm obviously not going to text him. I'm like, I'm just a bit shocked. I get a message from him an hour later, and he's like, hey like i just want to say i had such a good night thank you so much for everything like i really hope i can see you again and can you not feel when a girl is uncomfortable especially when she's literally voicing it you've obviously lied about missing your train you've obviously lied about your battery percentage well he clearly thought that i didn't realize which at the beginning i didn't basically i just never spoke to him again and i remember telling my friends the story the next day and they were like tash you're stupid yeah i knew i was stupid but i was like why? And they were like, because obviously the trains are still running past 11. Most days they run past 11. I didn't know how they worked. And I just believed the guy because I believe everyone. And I was naive and I thought, yeah, like, why would someone lie about that? So yeah, that's basically what happened. First time I ever got played was when I was in college and I bumped into my buddy and he said, hey, I met this girl. And I said, that's amazing. Love that for you. And he said, no, I like just met her. We were cleaning up trash at a park. And I thought that is so on brand for you. Let's call this guy Ken. It was very on brand for Ken. And he said, I met her and I liked her and I wanted to see her again. So I invited her on this trip with me and my buddy this weekend. Problem is, it's just me and a bunch of dudes and I don't want her to be uncomfortable. So I was thinking you could come with us on the trip. So he said, can you come on this trip with me and my buddies and be the token girl so that my new friend Becky doesn't feel uncomfortable? And I said, that sounds amazing. We went on this trip and he said, you're going to like her so much. You guys are going to really hit it off. You're just like both awesome. I just think you'll be really good friends. And we did hit it off and we did become really good friends and we were hanging out all the time. I went home with her for Christmas. Her parents were so lovely and warm and just made me feel so welcome. It was great. Ken just found me this new best friend and they were dating the whole time as well. And so sometimes we would all hang out together. And then when they got engaged, the moment they got engaged, the friendship was over. She was done with me, wanted nothing to do with me. When I reached out, she would be really cold or really mean. She would ice me out. I somehow, somehow scored an invite to the wedding reception. And at the reception, I was talking to them as a couple and her husband, Ken, was saying, oh man, we're gonna have so much fun this summer. I have so many fun things planned for our group. We're just, it's just gonna be such a blast. And it, they did have such a blast that summer, but without me, because I didn't get invited to anything. And the only reason I knew they were all hanging out was because Becky kept posting to her social media, hanging out with the gang. Gang's all here. Love this crew. Things like that. And I was like, that used to be my crew. I've racked my brain. I've like made a list of a hundred different things I could have said, I could have done like around the time of the engagement that could have for some reason ended our entire friendship because it's really hard for me to believe that she was being my friend just because I was friends with Ken. If she was, she didn't have to go that hard. Also, I wasn't close with Ken like that. This man and I had never so much as side hugged. She didn't have to go that hard. I don't think he cared about me that much. Anyway, she decides to stop being my friend. She hangs out with all of our friends except me and she replaced me with another woman with a dog, which kind of hurt my feelings. She stopped being my friend but also she did not turn off her location sharing on snapchat and so sometimes i would just check to see what she was up to i didn't check frequently i was just on snapchat scrolling through my friends i was looking at the map okay and she was on the map and i noticed she was two blocks away from me and i was like huh that's weird and that's when i realized we had both moved into the same little suburb same little neighborhood because i went back and i checked later and i started checking it kind of that's when i started checking her location frequently because i was like she's my neighbor she lives two blocks away and then i got really shy and i stopped walking my dog down that street and then i thought you you know what? I should like bake them some Christmas cookies. I should bake and decorate them some Christmas cookies. I should make a little card, leave a little cute Christmas note with it, and just leave them on their front porch. But also, I was gonna put in like an extra half a cup of salt. Just enough salt so that they would be like, ooh, special treat, and then it wouldn't be edible. That's what I wanted to do. That was my little revenge plot. And I'd like to say that the reason I didn't do that was because I was the bigger person and I was emotionally mature and I was over it. In fact, let's just go with that. I decided not to give them salty cookies because I wasn't salty anymore. I had grown and matured and it had nothing to do with the fact that the entire street had ring cameras.